Hey there, my musical friends. Uh, my name is John Smale, and this is a continuation of, of my uh, music blog called Smale's Pace. It's about memories of the 70s, especially at a coffee house uh, I owned in those years. And after a couple of years of operating Smale's Pace, it looked like we were going to survive, and I think the community uh, figured that out, and, and the media, etc. And I got a call one day. Uh, from a fellow by the name of Bruce Love and and uh, somebody in the kitchen said John it's for you love is calling and I thought oh great finally this is this is this is excellent it turned out to be Bruce Love he was a program director at CFPL FM radio in uh, in London and uh, Bruce says John you don't know me but uh, we'd like you to come down and meet with us and we've got a new uh, radio format which is community oriented and we're getting sort of experts in their musical field involved so that uh, when they're talking on the radio, they sound at least authoritative or they know what they're talking about. Would you be interested in that? Come down and do a voice check and, uh, and meet with us. So I did. Uh, I got to meet with uh, Bruce and Jeff Bingle and uh, we, they talked about calling the show Just Plain Folk. And I said, well, uh, I don't know if I want to call it that. Uh, I said, I, you know, beggars can't be choosers, but uh, if I'm going to do this, I want to be able to promote uh, Smale's Pace. And he said, well, let's call it Smale's Pace. So on and on, uh, that's what we did. The radio shows that I uh, produced were on, uh, they were taped shows and they were aired on Tuesday nights and Friday nights. Now, uh, and again on Sunday night. So, the secret of all this is, um, is was my producer and engineer, Ian Davies, the wizard, the wizard of London. Uh, he's also a concert promoter. And uh, what can I say about Ian? There's a whole show coming up on Ian Davies, but in this particular case, uh, I knew Ian at Western when he was involved with radio there. Now Ian worked for the radio station and he was assigned as my engineer. What that means is in those days, a uh, little background on, on how radio shows were produced. First of all, here in, on this uh, upper corner, you can see a script, a handwritten script by me. I would, in this case, I was... Um, the show was going to be on Bill Hughes, Billy Hughes. You'll see a notation up in the upper right hand corner that says one uh, a minute and 15 seconds. Well, I'd write out these scripts and then I would time them with a, with a, with a timer. And I knew that was one fifteen, and then I'd play one of Bill's songs and that would be like two minutes and 30 seconds. And you'll see on the, on the bottom there, uh, below that script, are some notations on time and uh, you can see this, I had certain songs there that, that I was going to play off of Bill's albums or uh, live tapes and, and everything I had to add up to 28 minutes for a half hour show and I think, uh, well, it would have been probably 55 minutes or so for a one hour show which uh, allowed for advertising breaks. Um, you can, so that was that. Was that. now. When Ian and I sat down to tape the shows, I would have these these scripts in my time and we'd insert the songs. And then I would say, I'd make a mistake, a flub, uh, like I do with these uh, YouTube uh, blogs. And well, that wasn't good enough for Ian. That had to be exercised, that had to be taken out. And nowadays in digitized form, it's just pushing a button and erase it. In those days, uh, there was quarter inch tape uh, and it reel to reel, of course. And he would find the spot where I said, oh, sh whatever, and or uh, ums and ahs. And he would take a razor blade and he would find that spot. He would make a cut, find the end of the spot, make the other cut where he'd take out a, uh, an inappropriate word. And then he would join the, up with uh, editing tape. What a process. I mean, he was a wizard at that. He, he never complained. He never complained that I was uh, uh, sort of a rank amateur that uh, 
matured a bit in the radio business, but it wasn't my career. I didn't go to certainly didn't go to any broadcast school or classes. Uh, it was just meant to have fun, uh, promote uh, the artists, and uh, ultimately also to promote, to promote uh, Smale Space and upcoming events and letting the community know about this this great place. Uh, it was always a bit of a struggle. So this was a, a platform for me to be able to talk about artists, talk about the club, and uh, I would go in on a, after six and the place was closed down and Ian and I would set up the control room and I'd have these big headphones on because Ian was in another room and we had to communicate through microphones and and uh, I had candles set up around just give a little atmospheric uh, conditions in the room to get rid of the, the overhead fluorescent lights. And we did this for, for years. Uh, you'll, you'll see here on the screen also is an invoice. Uh, it's dated November 6th, 1975. It's uh, addressed to CFPL FM radio. And there's a notation that I did uh, oh, 10 shows for the princely sum, and you wonder what I did with all this money, $600, maybe $600 in 1975 amounted to something. I don't think so. I mean, you, let's just say they got a good deal. I got a good deal because uh, I had fun with it and I was uh, promoting Smale Space and promoting a lot of musicians. That's a, a, a bit of a snippet on um, radio days at CFPL. I'm going to continue on because there's a part two to this that's, a lot of fun because uh, part two involves uh, my good friend uh, Ken Palmer, who uh, I invited to be a be a partner on this radio show because I was uh, not running out of steam, but I just needed a new uh, new vehicle and new inspiration. Hope you enjoyed today. If you did, uh, put some comments down. Uh, talk about if you ever heard the show. Talk about maybe a, a show that you'd like me to to talk on. Who knows? Uh, I'd be happy to respond to you and I'd be happy to have you uh, subscribe. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye my musical friends.